What's up my comic comrades? Welcome to Variant Quarantined Edition Episode 4. I'm counting now because why the heck not? Also, like I've said in the past, the entire Variant team and myself hope you guys are staying safe and healthy during these very trying times. But I did also want to say, since we're all stuck inside for the foreseeable future, let us know what comics you're reading, what TV shows and movies you're watching, and what games you're playing. Because maybe, just maybe, we'll do an episode on the best nerdy things to do while we're stuck inside. I'm talking about the best comics to read, the best TV shows to watch, the best games to play, and so on and so forth. So let us know if you'd like to see that in the comments below. With that said, it's time to talk about the Hell Arisen finale which is the climax to the whole Year of the Villain event. Year of the Villain being an event that basically crossed over into every DC book in one way or another over the last year or two. With that said, we already covered Hell Arisen issue one in this episode right here, so I highly recommend you watch that episode first before continuing to watch this one. So let's start talking about issues two through four of this epic miniseries that pits Luther, Perpetua, and the Batman Who Laughs all against one another. And clearly there's gonna be spoilers for the entirety of the Hell Arisen miniseries, so that's your spoiler warning. Diving right in, issue two of Hell Arisen starts off with Lex facing off against an infected Supergirl, Shazam, Blue Beetle, Donna Troy, and Hawkman. To which Luther says, it's insulting really. Not to me, but to you guys. The Batman who laughs would not risk coming to my laboratory himself. So he sent his lackeys while he watches on a live feed. It shows how disposable you are to him. Shazam then says, watch your mouth Luther. You might not have the balls to admit how messed up you are, but your new powers are worth exactly squat. You're just like the other insects out there. We're here to squash you. Luther replies, remember for a moment that I have spent my life putting myself against the most powerful being on this planet. That's why your boss wouldn't face me himself. It was never my powers that were going to kill you. It was my mind. And just like that, the infected league starts attacking Lex. But Lex uses his Lex bots to help hold them off. Blue Beetle, now going by the name of Scarab, says, where did he go? As Lex's computers start infecting Scarabs. Lex then replies, you really thought of all people I wouldn't know how to go head to head with alien technology? Son, I built my first alien killing device before I learned how to drive, as a massive fist squashes Scarab. And then on the next page, we see Lex in a Hulk busterized looking version of his popular battlesuit say, in the seconds you were gloating, I beat each and every one of you. Like when he uses his Martian physiology to get in King Shazam's head to force him to say his name to depower himself. And then on the next page, Luther walks out like a boss saying, computer, self-destruct sequence, one minute, bring the building down on top of them, upload all surviving data on the infection to my suit. We are then taken to Slaughter Swamp, just outside of Gotham where we see the Batman who laughs. Sky Tyrant, AKA Hawkman, radios in and tells the Batman who laughs that Luther has escaped, We've taken heavy damage. But the Batman who laughs doesn't seem so concerned as we find out that somehow he was able to trap the freaking Phantom Stranger. Meanwhile, Luther is back at one of his bases preparing his next move with Mercy, one of his former employees, who is reluctant to work for Luther again, but ultimately she does anyway because money and she has a liking to Lex. And at the end of the issue, Lex breaks into the Hall of Justice to go inside of the cell of the infected Jim Gordon to get a blood sample from him so he can engineer a formula to defeat the Batman who laughs and reverse everything he's put into motion. But wouldn't you know it, more infected League members find Lex and are ready to brawl. Then on the last page of the issue, Mercy goes to the Joker saying, Lex needs your help and he needs it now. To which the Joker says, while laughing mind you, now that's funny. This brings us to issue three. At the beginning of the issue, the infected league consisting of Miss Martian, Hawk and Dove, Booster Gold, Beast Boy and more, make quick work of Lex. They then start dragging him away and saying they're gonna hurt him until he can't think straight and then throw him into a cell. Then the infected Jim Gordon says, they're gonna keep infecting the heroes of this world until they've got them all, and that's when the real party starts. But just as Gordon is done saying that, the Joker shows up saying, did somebody say party? Oh, sorry. I think I have the wrong room. Is this the gift shop? And Miss Martian says, is that? And Joker replies, yes, it is. Then Joker pulls out a machine gun and starts letting loose on the whole league, forcing them to take cover and leave Lex. Joker then walks up to Lex saying, did somebody hurt my Lexi poo? Show me where those bad heroes touched you. I got your message. Lex then says, obviously, now get your hands off of me. And Joker replies, play nice or I'm gonna let the commissioner eat you. Joker then whistles for Warp, a teleporting French supervillain most commonly associated with the Brotherhood of Evil and or the Society of Sin. Anyway, for one reason or another, Warp is completely under the Joker's control and teleports them back to the Joker's hideout. But Lex is like, the Batman who laughs and his dozens of heroes and super scientists can trace teleportation back to this base 
so the Joker hands Warp a gun and tells him to kill himself, which he does. Joker then brings Lex inside of a circus tent where we see Mercy's being held at knife point by Punchline. That's right, Hella Risen issue three is actually the first full appearance of Punchline as she only cameoed in Batman issue 89. Anyway, Joker says, hold her tight Punchline, my dear. Lexi and I are talking business while holding a gun to the back of his head. Luther says, you wouldn't have come to the Hall of Justice if you were just planning on killing me. Joker says, wouldn't I? Isn't that exactly the petty sort of thing I'd do? And Lex replies, killing me would mean victory for the Batman who laughs. And Joker says, we don't speak of him here. Luther says, you're not gonna let a Batman rule the world. It's not in you to allow that to happen. Lex then says, I have a plan. I wouldn't have called you if I didn't need you. Who else but the Joker would know how to kill a Batman? Joker then says, no, I'm not playing your games. And Lex is like, what gives you the idea you have any choice in the matter? The world's smartest mind is about to crack open the world's most twisted. You're now as much my puppet as that teleporter was yours. Now let's get the information I need. So Lex starts rummaging through the Joker's mind while saying, I have no idea how you're perceiving this Joker. Whatever twisted logic you're putting to this image of me rifling through your mind. Which as the readers can see, Joker's imagining Lex literally cutting open his skull and doing brain surgery. Lex then says, normally I would create a comfortable framework to prevent long-term damage but your mind is already broken beyond repair. I don't need to worry about being delicate. Also, you just tried to kill me. And the Joker just goes, it tickles. Lex continues to say, on the Batman Who Laughs world, Batman killed you, and you had poison in your heart to twist his brain and shut down its moral center to ensure that whoever killed you would become something worse. Lex goes on to say, I need your formula to see how this dark Batman perverted it. The Joker toxin is helping suppress the moral centers of their brains, yes but the real work is being done by microdoses of dark matter, metals from his realm. They're receptors for his energy. That's what's twisting them into their darkest selves. I know how to win. Lex finally replies, there, I have what I need. Mercy, let's get the hell out of this place. But Mercy replies, don't tell me, tell her. And Joker says, you know my friend Punchline, she might just be the funniest gal I've ever met in my life. She knows this trick with a rusty saw that always puts the boys in stitches. If they survive, of course. Forgive me, my dear. My friend Lex here has never had much of a sense of humor. It's why he doesn't see how funny this all is. Joker and Lex continue to have a back and forth for a bit before Joker says, Punchline, I think it's time we moved on from this base. It's spent. Lexi, be sure to remember to lock the doors, feed the gorilla, and turn off the gas when you leave. And if you die, make sure you kill him first. After this, Lex has Mercy give a message to some targets that Lex has picked out, saying tell them high noon at the Hall of Justice. And on the next page, we see Lex at the Hall of Justice saying, Batman, show yourself. And then the Batman who laughs comes out with his infected league ready to fight. And just then, Lex is joined by several villains, including Lobo, Solomon Grundy, Captain Cold, and more, who start fighting the league. Lex then tells the Batman who laughs, I've been building my own army this past year. And when it comes to who's going to be able to be the baddest of the bad, I bet on villains. And this, my friends, brings us to the fourth and final issue of the Hell Arisen series. And let me just say, some crazy things are about to go down. Issue four opens up with Lex telling Mercy his life over the past several years, starting with the Forever Evil event from the New 52, where he destroyed the Crime Syndicate, as well as telling her how he joined the Justice League, and then after which the multiverse eventually brought the Crime Syndicate back to life. We actually found out the Crime Syndicate was brought back to life in issue one of Hell Arisen. Lex continues to reflect on all these times, saying how humanity was always meant to be subjects of these gods, whether you're talking metas or actual gods, and that in order to win, he had to become something more. And by the end of telling all this to Mercy, he says, in the future, gods will bow to man. And then of course, the fight ensues with the villains versing the infected heroes. And of course, the Batman who laughs going head to head with Luther. At which point, Luther is able to remove the Batman who laughs visor saying, that stings, doesn't it? You've been using that visor to ground you in this reality, to keep you from crumbling into the cosmic excrement you were always meant to be. How long does it take? And the Batman who laughs says, not long enough, as he's attached a bunch of battering bombs to Luther and they explode. The Batman who laughs says, I hope your goddess is watching right now. I want her to witness your loss. Luther then pulls out a syringe and says, then you should have gone for the kill and stabs the Batman who laughs in the neck. And Batman says, what is this? Luther says, it's a cure in a manner of speaking. The dark multiverse energy flows through you as a creature of the dark, but your victims were made of the wrong kind of matter you injected enough dark metal into each of your targets to essentially broadcast the energy inside yourself and twist them into the dark. I've cut it off at the source and the energy in you won't be able to spread anymore and your infection should wear off any second now. As Luther is saying this, everyone who was infected by the Batman who laughs like Jim Gordon and the Justice League 
finally revert back to normal. Long story short, Lex brings the Batman who laughs to Perpetua, basically being like, look what I did for you. I defeated your greatest adversary. But of course, the Batman who laughs is just that, Batman, meaning he's not out of tricks. He tells Perpetua, you think you destroyed the Justice League, but they were pulled to safety by the great powers of the universe and set on a course that will topple you if you don't act quickly. Lex is like, you're lying. But he's like, nope, I was able to trap the Phantom Stranger in a jar last week and get him to talk and confirm my findings. Which is why he had the Phantom Stranger locked up in issue two. The Batman who laughs continues to tell Perpetua, you don't need a pet anymore. You need a right hand, a strong right hand who already knows how to defeat the heroes of the earth who will rise to stop you. You need me. At this point, Lex has heard enough and is like, kill this thing at once. I have given you everything. You cannot seriously be entertaining this madness. But Perpetua just throws Lex back with a flick of her hand saying, you dare speak to me like this? And then strips him of the powers that she gave him. But even without powers, Lex still charges Perpetua. So she just says, disappointing, and teleports him back to Earth. The Batman who laughs then tells Perpetua, pity. It's tough to find good help these days. At least now you could stop pretending to have any intention of keeping Earth alive. Then Perpetua says, tell me creature, tell me these things I cannot see. Tell me how to stop the heroes from their current course of action. The Batman who laughs replies, oh, I think you'll find it's a good one. Look into my mind, see what I have in store for them. So she does and says, oh my, and starts laughing hysterically. And then on the last page of the issue, we see Lex inside of a huge crater on earth where Mercy says, Lex, you're alive. And he replies, no, we're all dead with a caption saying to be continued in death metal. And that, my friends, is the Hell Arisen miniseries. I enjoyed it a lot. I'm actually really enjoying everything that James Tynan is doing right now. But what's really crazy is that all this Batman Who Laughs and Perpetua stuff is just ramping up and gonna continue in DC's Death Metal, which is the sequel to Dark Knight's Metal by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. So it's really cool that everything is gonna come full circle considering that all this Batman Who Laughs stuff started in Dark Knight's Metal. And then even Perpetua was introduced in Scott Snyder's Just League run who was also the writer of Dark Knight's Metal. So I'm just really curious to see how this is all gonna wrap up in Death Metal, especially since Wonder Woman is supposed to be the main protagonist for that book. Which I'm really curious to see because Dark Knight's Metal was a Batman-centric story arc, and then, you know, you have the Batman Who Laughs, which obviously is an evil Batman and all the other evil versions of Batman. So I'm just curious to see how they're gonna bring Wonder Woman to the forefront of that. But we're gonna find out soon enough when Death Metal eventually drops. But let us know what you guys think of Hell Arisen. Did you enjoy this story? Did you not enjoy this story? And do you like all the evil Batman? Do you like the Batman Who Laughs? Do you like Perpetua and all this Year of the Villain stuff? Let us know in the comment section below. And just like that, that's gonna bring another episode of Variant Quarantine Edition to a close. But fret not, we'll be back in a couple of days to bring you guys some more comic book themed content. Until then though, check out this. Batman who laughs action figure. He was chilling next to me the whole time. Is this like a flex? Is this like a weird nerdy flex? I don't know. Either way, I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.